Today, we are trying something new. I'm going to try to remix a melody in three different genres. Genres being techno, synth pop, and the last one will be the cyberpunk. Really different genres. I think this will be really fun, especially for showing different tricks that is utilized in different genres in a single video. So, hope it. So the first one will be the synth pop techno pop track. So let's pick a kick. I'm gonna go for or deep melody kick samples. This one has really this little bit organic sound in it, perfect for synth pop, and a little bit EQ cutting up a little bit here. And the second thing, probably even more important, is getting that really washy snare. I just need really analog snare for this one, and I know that in my core sample pack there is one snare. So it sounds like this. There's two different things that's needed for this snare. The first one is distorting it a bit. I like to do it with overdrive. And the second most important thing is adding a really big huge reverb on top of that. For this part, if you just go for something like insert, it won't give you the effect that you are feeling. If you make it longer, you get the whole effect or big effect, but then the tail is too long. And then you don't have this like sucking kind of effect in it, especially when the kick hits. We are going to group this up and we're going to create another chain. The first chain will be the just a main chain, solo. Nothing in it. The second chain will be 100% wet, so this will be full wet chain. So I want two different things here. First, when the snare hits, I don't want too much reverb in it. You can actually do it with the pre-delay, but I like to do it with the compression. Side chain it to itself, so when the snare hits, we are taking the reverb. Snare and pre-fx. What happens now is like if I saw this. Tail is still there. We have to fix the tail. For that purposes, I'm going to use a gate, simple gate. There's different versions to do that. I feel like that this is the easiest way to do it. At the gate here, if we hold again. Threshold decide when the gate opens, when we start to hear the sound. And the return decide when the gate closes again so that we don't hear the sound anymore. And it releases how fast it will shut down the gate so that you can actually see really nicely in the picture. And together, you can definitely hear now the stop, stop that like this, like a start and stop effect. The only thing I should do is like release a bit longer so that it is just right before the kick hits. Perfect. This is just the main, the backbone of the sound. It's really, really important. At this point, I will also maybe just put a simple driving bass sound. Control MIDI. I'm going to get the mini because I want this old school, really analog sound. And I just release my uh, preset pack for the mini. And I know there's a sound already there. I will show you how the sound is made. So we are just using simple driving bass sound like I mentioned. It's just F sharp. This is good enough. I'm going to go for my mini V3 and then go for my uh, preset pack. I think it is called the things are strange or stranger things. So I immediately hear why I'm going for this one. I can maybe open up the brightness a bit. So I have these macros here, basically playing with the kind of two things that is important here because it's a very analog sound and there's a lot of uh, phasing in it. And the easiest way to fix it, let's pick a single compressor, and increase the ratio quite a bit and put it down, turn off the makeup. I want you to take a look at the amount of compression. You can definitely see that the amount is slightly different at each hit. And that's the reason that we are picking the compression, just to get this main overall volume level as similar as possible. Just like that. Another thing is, of course, our side chain to kick. But I'm going to make it really fast. The other thing is I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to also side chain the snare. This one goes slow, more slower. It's like dun 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 together. You can use slightly EQ if you ever want to exaggerate analog vibe, boost a bit around maybe. Or 
or we can maybe make it a bit shorter. Maybe make it a bit darker. We can just move the overdrive. Perfect. Okay, now comes the main idea. In the title section, you will see that it's a remix in the main same melody, three different genres. The, the melody here is again coming from my sample pack. I was looking for melody. I was thinking first using my old tracks, but I don't want to really put my tracks in, in your faces. So I'm going to go for again my preset pack for the R3 Mini. And I think there's a really cool melody in there. It is the Resident of Anjuna. Like, let me show you with the loops. <laughs> There's a lot of notes in it. My, my idea is like it could be easier to remix this in the different genres. So I'm going to pick the sound here, put it here. For a synth track, this is too much arpeggio. So we have to cut off some of the notes. I'm going to keep the melody, but turn off some of the notes. And of course, for the sound itself, I'm looking for maybe a brighter Atari sound, like chip beat type of sound here in the banks. Back to Atari, this one. Yeah, that is exactly what I mean. Basically, the square waves and the cutoff is all the way up so that we hear this kind of really old-school Atari type of sound. If you play this one, this will sound like a melodic techno. This is too much. I'm really thinking like uh, picking pieces like this and playing something here and then again. Let me quickly do that. I, I did exactly what I mentioned. I just cut off this part and this part. So we ha have kind of a melodies in between and then stops. Use the reverb to make it a bit like a brighter. And then we have the bit darker sound, but we can open this up a little bit. So you can hear a bit more. So we immediately get this 80s, 90s vibes uh, with this one. We need kind of icing on top of this. Oftentimes you hear this bright synth because we have here the space and we can answer this space with that type of uh, polysynth synth sound. So I'm, I'm mainly looking for like a bright sustained sound and this ethereal voices is kind of it. The main idea is like keeping a bit sustained, keeping a decay. I think I have some modulation here. The velocity is important. If you want to play around with the like sound levels and assign the cutoff, and then of course a slight FM modulation, so that it gives a bit this unstable vibe. And for the chords, we're gonna pick something quite simple to answer. So what is happening here is that first we play this, and then I have these short notes. Like you can see, I've tried a couple of different things, but these are really simple two or three notes. First this and answer, and here we are kind of fighting, and then here kind of again answer. So. If I play together, you will get a bit more idea. Here it feels almost like it's a bit too much, but I tried actually different options like moving it here. But when I played all the elements together, it makes sense. So if I try one more time. And the other thing is the one final scene, kind of background scene that I can use, dun 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 kind of sound so that I can use it to build tension. So here we have kind of poly stabby chord. They kind of opening up, like I mentioned, to build up tension. They, again, really short decays, no sustain at all to give this like bum 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 sound. It's the same all the time, but here we just have switching from C sharp to B to get this like dun 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 uh, sound so that it's like almost also aligns with the snare if I play together. Let's switch to the full track so that I can explain first how this can be utilized. So let me quickly switch to the original file. So this is how the project file looks like. Again, we have kind of intro, verse, kind of a break to be honest. And then we have the big chorus, like I said, everything comes together at the end of the track. First, bass melody. And that was really cool. The melody style is not that complicated, but quite playful. So if I play it.
It's almost like playing the bass guitar, really. Like this, when everything is empty. Yes, there is one important thing that I didn't show that was really cool, is this pad bright flat sound, really big notes, creates this really beautiful ambience. And I had this really beautiful pad in my preset pack, oh, it's called Oh My. It's like a little movement in the sound, a really long sustain, and then I think the most important things are the modulations here. VCO is controlling the LFO amount, and the LFO modulating the cutoff and the pulse width modulation as well. Modulation in modulation kind of thing. And then I think I had some chords, of course, to give this bright sound and a bit delay to make it a bit more ambience. Together with the chord progression, or together with this big chord, it creates really nice ambience. You oftentimes really feel like this magical ambience in 80s track, this is exactly what it does. And then what I did, I just one octave down and make it a bit simpler and make the darker version of it. It's the same chord and together. Really, really beautiful ambience. The main idea is like we build up here the track, so I get just simple serum white noise build up. Uh, just like a band pass, we are moving up, modulating up. And on top of that, from our sample packs, like reverse white and then reverse noise. And the background noise to make it everything a bit vibey, eh, I will say. One more thing that I did is that I get the support synth uh, here. The, it's similar to the origin sound, but it's playing the same chord instead. And then we switched our like dun 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 afterwards. And then slight female vocals here. It's a really pet sound. And then, yeah, this is also maybe important. It is the classic tom hit, but this is not really only tom here. So if I play it. So what's happening here is that I have this low 909 snare sound, uh, tom sound, and on top of that, uh, analog snare, and then a slight serum white noise. So, I play with this dry wet for the echo, so that when it ends, we just like... Very classic 80s, uh, I will say, effect. So I just wanted to have it to keep that ambience. Also, this is the second part of the bass. While we are driving the, playing the driving sound, we are still changing the notes slightly. So let's listen to synth remix of the melody. Take a look.
Yeah, that was it. I really enjoyed making this. And this time we are making what, it, what is called Cyberpunk. It's a style that like uh, reminiscence of industrial techno, but there are a lot of riffs in it that is actually kind of borrowed from the metal music, especially like a heavy metal, thrash metal, I would say, even death metal. There those a lot of half note riffs in it. But the first thing that we are going to do, bring down the tempo to 96. The main reason that I'm picking 96, because that was the year that the first twisted metal game that is released in EU. For me, it was one of the games that pioneered old school cyberpunk track especially if you go back and listen to the twisted metal tree and the soundtracks that you can definitely hear that early versions of the cyber what we call cyberpunk today it's really cool it was also the game that the cool kids played back then like like me you know and then i'm gonna go for my sample pack as usual i know what what type of kicks there it takes me a few seconds to get a good kick let's put that in so i just picked this code sample mainly influenced by the drum code it's kind of having this industrial vibe in it. Then I will jump straight to the meat of the track, which is the bass sound. Uh, I'm going to build two layers. The first layer will be a bit darker, distorted sound. And for that, I'm going to just use the serum. I'm going to make this from scratch so that you understand a bit more. If you are especially into this channel, you have to understand how the sound is made. When you are designing this sound, you should be always using distortion together. Because anything that you do, any changes, the cutoff, the resonance, the detuning, the, the phase, everything will affect how the distortion reacts to the sound. Let's keep it simple. I just put a pedal, more like a guitar pedal, out of bass and treble and mid, like really distorting a lot. And if I just play a note, it will sound like this. I'd like to try first a kind of a single sine wave sound. In Serum, there is that analog vibe, vibey sound, you like this. I'm going to put the random down so that at least I kind of stable the sound, even though it's sine wave. And on top of that, pick another uh, oscillator, maybe detune it one octave up. Or maybe we can do it one octave down and zero like this. So basically the same idea. And I'm going to go for maybe something like this, right? Oh yeah, now we have this like, uh, 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 sound. This is exactly what we are looking for. I'm going to go for also a kind of a bit more plucky sound because we want to have this do 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 sound. This kind of like roop, roop sound. It can bring the resonance a bit down. Maybe make it darker. And the other thing is this is now by passing the filter. Let's put it into filter as well. Oh yeah. Put the first time on the post like this. I'm gonna keep it simple like this. By the way, I just put the notes there. The first thing that we should be thinking about is that these things here. It's like the velocities are changing. And then, of course, no start not making sense if you're into more like a regular key, how we treat the keys in the music, especially like the, let's say, previous Fauzi, pause and so on. Here we are just utilizing, the, it looks like almost like random notes. There is an idea behind it, but first let's take a look at here. So what, why I did this one? If you play the guitar, you there is a trick that you put your palm of your uh, hand on the strings and when you hit the guitar, it will sound really dark, not sustained at all because you are not letting the strings uh, vibrate. Get it crazy like the oop, oop sound. So how you can do it in Serum is, or any synthesizer in that sense, is that you can actually take the velocity and put it on the cutoff. And if you play higher velocity, it will open more. If you play lower velocity, it will open less. <laughs> In the low layer, it's not that important, but when we create the high layer, especially when we open up the sound, we would like to have this kind of guitar vibe. Uh, and this is exactly how you did. It's really simple and easy, and it's really quite useful. Other thing, let's come back to the notes. What's happening here? So again, you should be thinking a bit like a guitar player. Like if you haven't played it, it's a bit harder to think about it. I played it many years, uh, like a thrash metal, heavy metal, and so on. And the main riffs in those type of track is like a create by simply playing the half notes on top of that so let's take a, a super classic right from the metallica master of puppets so the main idea in that track for example playing this half notes that and the cyberpunk kind of takes that the idea the that riff idea and it decreases tempo and makes it a bit more catchy as well so here take a look at this this is like it's like a half note above and three half note and coming back and then we go down on the below. So, and if you play this one. 
here kind of feels like we are opening up the palm. This is the first layer though. This is kind of cool, but I want a bit grit in it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate this. I want to have the same pedal, glue the sounds together. But instead of serum, I'm going to switch to the mini and pick something like a bit brighter. So in this case, I find this super simple bass sound. I want to do the simple, but a bit distorted. Let me take off the pedal so that you can hear the origin sound. This sound is really analog and having a lot of phasing between the oscillators. The important thing, like I told before, is the modulation and how I'm utilizing again velocity to cutoff. So take a look at velocity all the way up to the cutoff. So when we play higher velocities, the cutoff opens up, it gets like sound. Take a look one more time. If you put it into the pedal, look how it reacts. Compared to the other one, it was darker before, the, uh, the serum version. And together with the kick. Of course, we would like to blend them a bit better. If you're enjoying the video up to now, if you feel like it has been interesting to you, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like that button. It helps immensely. This is the only way to get feedback that you like the content so that I can make more. But other than that, let's continue with the next one. So we created kind of the backbone of the track. Of course, we can mix it better and so on, but I don't care too much about it at this part. Okay, do we, have, do we have the bass, the driving element, but we need something that creates this kind of confusing ambience. And this, what we are going to use the melody for. And that was my idea. Okay, I can take that melody and create this really weird ambience. What we are going to do, bring on, of course, our melody that we used also in the other tracks. The first thing that I did on the melody is like... Uh, we, before we had all these notes, it was just too much. It was too much melody. Again, I want to create this really weird ambience. So... And um, I picked this preset. It's basically a kind of acid sound. Clean sound, but you definitely understand what I'm going with this clean sound. I just want that emphasis, like the resonance on top. I'm going to push it into the distortion and amp. Do it like this. So we have the amp first. Ooh. And pedal on top. Ooh. The main idea is putting into the really big ping pong echo or delay to create this like super ambience on top. Reverb. This just creates kind of a super weird, like a kind of computerized sound and together with the bass. So let's put a simple snare. Take the snare from the sample pack, four sample pack. A slightly long the, the, uh, reverb, but it's not that long, one second. It is enough time to the reverb disappears until next kick. So it sounds like... The problem here that we have a very bright bass and ambience and everything, that's the reason that the hi-hats are not like dominant in the track, in the cyberpunk tracks that I find at least. And they are also weirdly placed. And I'm not going to use this uh, hi-hat and instead a cymbal. So here I have the cymbal sound from the uh, sample pack. And look at the placement, it's like the beginning of the each quarter bar. Oftentimes other tracks you would hear it here. Tss, tss, but here, tss, tss, together with the track. <laughs> we have though most of the elements, what we need is like the ear candies, and there are a lot of ear candies with this uh, type of tracks, like, like it breaks like this, and then you hear some another scene, and then track resets or conjuns with another pad and so on. So let me switch to full track and we can take a look at those ear candies as well. Let's take a look at the ear candies that I'm talking. The first one is this one. This is like a pad sound. Sounds like this. This is just a pad sound that I took from the sample pack. Really long, almost like a guitar sound. Again, distorted. Like you see, everything is really distorted in this. This is like a simple pad, right? But if you distort it, It immediately feels like a guitar sound, even though it's not. 
And the main idea of this, for example, using it like when you go into a small break and switch the sound with another synth, something like this. It just gives this kind of again power feel. I have another fill synth somewhere here, I think. The pad fills like we here. It's like a, again very dark half notes utilization here. Damn kind of vibe. It's like the siren, the end of the world theme. Again, this like this was the super soul sound, super distorted or super bright itself, so without the amp. Add of noise, all those layers, the cutoff is all the way up and so on. Again, we are filling this up with the break here. And I have another cool trick that I haven't shown in this channel that I'm gonna show you for the first time is uh, because I didn't have the opportunity, this is not something that you use a lot in techno and house, but here what we have is a serum and we have, let me take off everything so that you can hear the origin sound. This is, I think this is more like things that you know if you are a guitarist, if you ever played like a guitar, uh, especially like a bit aggressive type of guitar, like metal, maybe heavy, uh, hard rock and so on. And these are things that I know from my old trash band days. Uh, we have the serum sound, sounds like this. This is actually done oftentimes either you take your guitar and put it into the amplifier and feed it back to itself so that's like meow, sound but there's an easy way to do it in the synthesizer as well i took this one lfo whoop, so it goes up and all the way up so the note slides up kind of feeding back vibe meow, whoop. that bloop sound comes from when we go down it's really quiet but it doesn't really matter because I have super aggressive amp on, on top of that. <laughs> really cool sound. And this envelope is actually here on the frequency. It is not showing, but it is also moving the sweep so that we have this weird <laughs> sound. I combine this one with the really this guy. It creates really this kind of old school twisted metal style effects. And of course, we have this guy. This is also from our sample pack, but sounds like this. It's kind of like a... And then we bring it down. This is a break here. Sounds like this. It's kind of like an old school break. And here we have just snare roll. This is not in something new. But let's just start then. I can show you a bit around. And you can hear the full track, so let's try. Yeah, and that was a really cool sound. But other than that, let's take a look at the last track now. All right, let's go back to the home ground and we will use this melody in techno. I will start with kick and rumble first. Let's put the tempo something around 128. So what we are going to do, pick a kick from our sample pack. I know there's already one. And you know what, let me put just the rumble as well. So what we have here is the kick from my core sample pack. Sounds like this. A good fat techno kick, main room techno kick, and two rumbles. The, this one I made is actually another video, so I don't want to repeat the same step, but I will put the link here so that you can take a look at how it is made. Sounds like this. 
This is a sub rumble, and on top of that, we have this kind of a bit. I would say friction rumble, and together they sound like this. My idea is taking the melody now and using the way it is, basically. I'm using with the original preset, 30, 30, they match each other. It sounds like this. Really quite tech noise uh, idea. What I added extra here is just overdrive and a bit delay. And main idea is aut using auto filter, like in the beginning, we decide maybe like this. and open this up and use this kind of a break and when we go into the main part like the chorus or the drop we can maybe layer this one with another preset a bit brighter in this case it is this one it's the same melody right nothing is changed but then i have a bit brighter sound like this if you play it together it will be a bit too overwhelming at the moment so I'm gonna turn this off. The other important thing that I will think about now that I showed in the channel before is that making an exciter. These are really important. In this case, I'm just using this, again, the same preset, very bright, super soft style sound. Sounds like this. But it's a very short decay time, so that it's it's kind of pum 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 pum. But we still have the sustain and using the decay mode on so that there's a nice tail or the release on it. If you play like this, it will be a bit boring. The main idea here is like turning on the, uh, the effects and here the, with the outer pan on the rate of one bar. So each bar, first of first half of the bar it will be quiet and the second half of the bar it will be louder. And this will create this kind of dun 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 dun, dun, dun kind of like a moving feel. So if I play like this and maybe I change the kick as well at the same time. This is more or less the chorus part. Of course, we need some shakers and hats, so let's quickly do the hats. Okay, so the idea is simple here. This is the main room techno high-end theory, more or less. The first thing is having this 16 hi-hats. It's just repeating notes, but we have slightly different values to just make the, each it slightly different. Here, we also have LFO, changing the derived signal of vocoder, so each hit like a subtle difference at each hit. The clutch trick over here is having the side chain, uh, mid side separation, and mid side we are having the clean sound. On the side, we have a reverb. It's a really subtle thing, a bit clutch thing. You don't need to do this, but in this case we have it here. And then we have a 16 hat, another layer, a bit like a transient, and then a heart hitting hat. And on 9 on 9 hat. Let me show this. This must like it's it's it is. And on top of that we have this ride together. And if we play all together now. Once this is done, there is the, the needs are just automation in the beginning, making it darker and maybe adding some percussion to support it and then going into the uh, break. So let's switch to the full track and I can show you those small effects and automations as well. All right, this is the, how the full track looks like. The main idea was like I mentioned earlier, the first we start with this clean uh, melody that we had. Open it up. And in meantime, build the ambience and go into the drop. So to make that the first, we had this back hit. This is basically clap sound. Open it up. We are keeping this sliding vibe in the drop and in the break as well. So that's the reason that we have this did it, uh, did it, uh, did it, and this like sliding and um, feel. And the same idea continues with the perks. We have this. And then we have the snare roll. And then of course we could have such chain. I didn't spend too much time on mixing. Not that important at this stage. And then we have the perk, same idea.
everything has a bit slight groove, slight tempo in it. And then of course this comes the beeps that we made earlier. Really important. <laughs> And then we go into the drop. Let me quickly see. Yeah, we have the riser. This is just white noise riser. And then there is a then there is like triple hit here. I also layered that one. The copy paste two octave down. I think we are sending the melody a bit into the reverb here and delay here. If we go here. And on the drop is like the things that coming together. First we have the shakers and 16 hats, uh, not shakers, so hats and 16 hats and then we bring in the right and then of course the more important part probably the layers of the melody. The first part is just our single stop and then in the second more core, chorus or let's say climax part we bring in the other guy and actually dropping down the uh, levels of this one so you can see that it's dropping down and the other guys going up so we are kind of blending them in together so that there is not too much noise it could have been blended a bit better but i didn't want to spend too much time on it to be make it perfectly but let's do start and again and i can show you around and how it sounds the same melody but in this time in this case it's the main room techno track so let's take a look <laughs> And yeah, that was it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. And let me know if you like the concept and if you try this in different genres as well. Other than that, I will catch you next one. Goodbye. <laughs>